Let's evaluate some Laplace transforms. Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics. F of t equal to 1. Well, here's our definition for the Laplace transform. And remember, s is greater than 0 as a condition. Here I put in 1 for f of t, and I integrate e to minus st. It's easy. e to minus st over minus s. Evaluate at the limits of integration here. At infinity, that's going to be 0. And at 0, that's going to be a 1. And you have then minus s in the denominator. And when you subtract, you get 1 over s. What is going on? A constant function in t space, when we transform to the mysterious space, it's a function 1 over s. So here's a nice analogy. We have normal space where things look like we expect them to, like stars, and then we have a transform space, the Van Gogh space, and things look really wild. When we apply the Laplace transform idea to differential equations, differential equations in normal space, when transformed to the Laplace transform space, the equations are algebraic. Yes, a differential equation then appears at a, as an algebraic equation. We solve the algebra and then get back to normal space by using Laplace transform tables and we have the solution to our differential equation. So let's build a Laplace transform table. We already have the Laplace transform for 1, 1 over s. Let's find the Laplace transform for e to the at. Well, if we do that, we have a very similar integral as before. Before we had a is 0, a is 0, and here with the a, very similar integral, and when we evaluate at the limits, here you must impose s greater than a so that the s wins out with the minus sign, and this behaves itself at infinity, it gives us 0. And then at the lower limit, you get the regular 1 here, e to the 0 powers 1, and the result is 1 over s minus a. Now I want to show you a neat way to arrive at this by a powerful result. If you take a function f of t and multiply it with e to the a t here to get a new function g of t, the Laplace transform of the g of t function can be obtained by taking the Laplace transform of f of t and simply shifting it by a. Let's see why that's the case. Using the definition, we have then f of t, you know, have the exponential here. The exponentials couple together, and you have minus s and a plus a with the t. And now you can stop right here and say, wait a minute. This is the Laplace transform where the variables s minus a in the Laplace transform result. In other words, these are constants when you treat them inside this integral. They don't depend on t, but the definition here for the Laplace transform was something in this parentheses here, whatever that is, is the argument for the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of g of t, see this product here, where you have e to the at is one of the uh, factors, you simply take the Laplace transform of this function and have it as s minus a. Now we just did one. In fact, we can take this f of t to be 1. If that's 1, then the Laplace transform of 1 we figured out was 1 over s. But this says shift the 1 over s. We shift the 1 over s. Well, if you do that, you get 1 over s minus a, which is the result. So we could have done this one using this trick, the one we did up here. I mean, we could do it with this trick. So that's nice to know. And let's continue here with cosine. And for the cosine, Laplace transform of that, we use a backward Euler formula and write this as the Laplace transform here of one half of the first you know, piece and plus one half of the second uh, exponential and then say now wait a minute uh, this is like having here um, a Laplace transform that we already have done, we've already done this, we, we, can, we can do this now by the tables, in other words this is i omega is your a. So that means you can put an i omega for the a and over here minus i omega which is going to then give you a plus because you know the minus i omega here with the minus sign there give you a plus and and we're finished. So we're actually going to build this one from something we already know rather than doing the integral the long way. And then once when you have this you find here the, the denominator is s squared plus omega squared 
and then you get a 2s and the omegas cancel. So this is the Laplace transform for the cosine and for practice here you do the sine and get this Laplace transform and here go ahead and do this one here where we're going to find the, tra the transform of this uh, cosine omega t multiply by this exponential and use this shifting property to do that. So I'm going to let you do these since uh, they're straightforward and good practice for you and I'm going to concentrate more on this one here, this t to the nth power. Well, reminiscent of our derivative trick, to get this integral done, the Laplace transform of t to the n, we'll take minus d ds derivatives on the exponential in here, which is simply the Laplace transform of 1, which we know is 1 over s, and taking negative d ds, you know, n times, will, you know, one derivative brings down negative 1, you know, kills that, so 1, then the, the next is 2, 3, up to n, so it's an n factorial, and every time you do that, you get an extra power down in the denominator for the s, so that's your result, the Laplace transform of t to the n. I like to uh, point out that the Laplace transform is a linear operation. The definition of a linear operation is if you have, say, alpha times this function plus beta times another function and you apply the operator to the combination, the alpha gets pulled right out and you take the linear operation on the f of t and then plus beta pulls right out and the similar operation on the g of t. So that's linear operation and it applies the Laplace transforms and the Laplace transform is zero by the way is zero. So here's our Laplace transform table and we're going to go to the next section where we look at the Laplace transform of a derivative in preparation to solving differential equations.